Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be clarifying some things from my last, vi well, not my last video, but I, I did two videos a couple days ago and the first one was about Angela and how it was revealed um, that she's housing her daughter Scotty and kind of the outrage and confusion about that because Scotty was seen in a live um, that the blogger John Yates did. And I wanted to clarify some things um, because I've gotten a lot of comments, um, both both sides of the issue regarding Scotty. Um, a lot of people are unaware exactly what she went to prison for. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, we're gonna talk about her sentence. We're gonna talk about some of the TV appearances that she made prior to appearing on 90 Day Fiance. And then she was arrested, convicted, and sentenced, and then did not appear in any subsequ subsequent seasons of the franchise. Um, TLC seemingly cut ties with her, but they continue to film Angela. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna kind of talk about how TLC used to react much more swiftly and diligently when it came to cutting ties with problematic family members, even if they weren't like primary cast members of reality shows. And they've really seemed to kind of be dragging their heels. Um, we're going to talk about Honey Boo Boo. We're going to talk about Josh Duggar. And um, that is going to be this video. So let's just jump right into it. So the first thing that I wanted to just get out of the way was um, when I made that video um, and I put it up, I did label Scotty in the video and some people, um, because it's not super clear, it's not super crystal clear video, um, some people are questioning whether or not that is Scotty or if that was Skyla. Well, Skyla also appeared on the live and I'm going to put a, um, a screenshot up right here. Skyla appeared in a white shirt. She was matching John and Cody in the shirts that she was wearing. And Scotty, and I'll put the screenshot up here, appeared in a blue shirt. They were both in the video, in the live, um, but the person in the blue shirt is in fact Scotty. So I just wanted to clear that up um, because some people just didn't, I don't know if they just had a hard time believing Angela would would feature her daughter in a live um, or if, if that really was Scotty. It was in fact Scotty. Again, um, Skyla white shirt, Scotty blue shirt. So as you guys know, um, I think this has been circulating for several years now. The Dean family is no stranger to um, reality TV. It seems like they've been trying to be on reality TV for many years. And they've had a couple appearances on The Maury Show. But what I found today, um, in addition to appearing on The Maury Show, um, which was paternity related involving um, Scotty. It was Scotty and Angie um, finding the paternity results for various children of Scotty. What I found in addition to that was this appearance on a show called The Trisha Goddard Show. I think it just went by Trisha. Um, this show ran from 2012 to 2014. And in May of 2014, Scotty and Angela went on this show. And I just have to play you this clip because I think it's really pertinent to what we're talking about today. So take me back. How, how did you and Chris even get together? In the Through first? my mama. My how mama come? and his mother was best friends at one time. Now, how many years difference is there? It's like six. Mm -hmm. So then you, you... Waited till he was 18. You waited till he was 18 and uh, you got together as a couple? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I got. I wanted to have a baby by him at 18, when he turned 18. You only wanted a baby? Yes. You didn't want a relationship then? No. And he this clip, and I also put this on my Instagram earlier, um, was from 2014. Um, Scotty was arrested in 2017 for a separate incident. So this, to me, shows a pattern of behavior which is really alarming and really disturbing. And um, just having to say I waited till he was 18 um, is 
problematic. Um, and um, to later find out for what she actually served time for is, um, it's pretty horrific. Okay, so in the first video I made about the Scotty Angela situation, I didn't um, go into the details of what Scotty served time for because I had figured that it is pretty well known. Um, several outlets have ran stories about this. Um, just uh, that some sources that I've used for this video. There's a People article I'm going to link in the description, an In Touch Weekly article, a Starcasm article. I'm going to link all of that down in the description. Um, so it's, it's out there. The information is out there if you want to look for it. Um, a lot of people, uh, one of the things that I think is critical to point out is that Scotty is in her late 30s. She was born in 1984. That makes her 36 or 37 at this point in time. When she was arrested, she would have been like 34 to 35. And having relationships with anyone um, under the age of 18 is just not right. And it's not a relationship. It's legally not a relationship. Another thing that's really important to point out is that the age of consent in Georgia is actually 16. So all of these counts that she was uh, charged with were involving a child under the age of 15. So a 15 year old and a mid 30 year old, that that is not a relationship. And we cannot excuse the acts of an adult with a child and try to excuse that away as having some sort of emotional connection or a relationship. It is just point blank period wrong. Scotty was in a position of power. She was a, in a position of trust from the family of that boy and she took advantage and she abused him. I think it's also really important to treat this young boy just as we would a young female victim who was taken advantage of by a male teacher or a male uh, sports coach or something like that. There would be absolute outrage and um, universal condemnation of this person and support for the victim. And I'm not saying that that's not happening here, but I think um, there is a tendency um, to try to excuse the sexualization of young men um, in a way that we have come to certainly call out when it happens to young women. I think we need to equally call that out when it happens to young men as well. And so in this instance, um, there is nothing consensual about what happened between Scotty and her victim. It was not consensual point blank period. I put a trigger warning at the beginning of this video, but I'm gonna issue another trigger warning now because what I'm about to talk about is going to be more explicit. Um, I'm going to be reading from a Starcasm article, which is quoting from the police reports and the indictments that were filed against Scotty. Um, it's not terribly graphic, but it is more graphic in nature. So this is a trigger warning. You can either cut the video here or skip ahead a few seconds if, um, if you see fit. Um, the grandmother of the boy reported the allegations against Scotty to police in September of 2017. According to the initial police report, the grandmother told police that Scotty Deem, a good friend of the family, had juvenile, the name was redacted, at her home while her boyfriend was out of town. While the juvenile was there with her and her children, Mrs. Deem had sexual intercourse with juvenile. This is an incident happened two or three times at Mrs. Ms. Deem's home. The count of statutory rape was for allegedly having intercourse with a child under the age of 16, while the aggravated molestation charge was for allegedly having oral sex with the boy. The 11 counts of child molestation are broken down into three counts for having the boy touch her inappropriately, three counts for touching the boy inappropriately, and five counts of having the inappropriate touching occur in the presence of other children. Um, like I mentioned in my first video on this, as part of her plea deal, Scotty pled guilty to three counts of child molestation. 
Um, she was sentenced to 20 years for each count, but was allowed to serve uh, the terms consecutively. Um, as we learned, she ended up, um, we knew she was going to not serve the whole 20 years, but it was thought that, or it was reported that she would at least have to serve two years and a day. Um, so it did shock a lot of people when she was released in May of 2020 after having only served 15 months. Sarcasm also reported, and I'm going to link that, um, link the article down here. Um, there was the assumption that she would remain on probation until 20 years and uh, for the 20 years of her prison sentence. But um, sarcasm obtained the prison records and it indicates that her parole end date was January 31st of 2021. So at this point, we can assume that she is a registered sex. She is not on probation. I've been asked um, about this and I looked into it um, and that is, did Angela know? Was she an accessory to this? What part did she play um, in allowing this to happen in enabling this to happen? Did she play a part in covering this up? And I can't find anything concrete. Um, Screen Rant, and I'll include it in the description of this video, did do an article. Um, I think it was put out at the end of June. When was this put out? Hold on. June 26th, um, that there are some allegations. Some people are saying that Angela bought alcohol um, for this boy. Um, and I'll just, I'll, I'll put the article in the description of the, um, of this video. I couldn't find anything concrete that would lead to me believing that Angela 100% knew or 100% enabled this. But what I did find was a clip from this Maury show um, where she is upset with Scotty about doing things in her home. So take a look at this clip. There. He wanted to go in and freshen up. I let him in my mom's house. That's he came lie. out. He was freshened up. She sure walked was. in. And when here she goes, what have y'all been doing? What have y'all... From other articles that I've read, it seems that there were periods of time where Scotty was either married or in a relationship and not living with Angela. Then when they would break up or separate, she would move in with Angela. So I don't know where Scotty was living when these incidents occurred it is very possible she was living at Angela's but I can't say a hundred percent um do I think it's entirely possible Angela knew about this and knew about Scotty's proclivities given the um appearance that she made on the Trisha show a hundred percent I do um this this absolutely looks like a pattern. I maintain what I said in my original video that I am shocked that um, she would be allowed to be around minor children, including her own children, um, because while she may have not shown proclivities towards her own family members, her those kids have friends and it's just not a safe environment um, for those children to be around. Now, I had made a video um, several weeks ago um, stating that I feel like TLC should fire Angela for, for many reasons, none that have to even do with this situation. I think that she's incredibly problematic and abusive towards Michael. And for that reason, I don't feel like she should be rewarded with reality TV fame or notoriety, whatever you want to call it. Um, I just want to take a trip down memory lane here. Um, when Honey Boo Boo was canceled, that was swift and immediate. And that came about, I don't, I don't recall the full details of um, the case, but June was involved with a man who was a convicted and because she wouldn't break up with him, they canceled the show. It was swift and it was immediate. Um, later on, uh, WeTV picked up the family to have their own show and um, that's beside the point, but that was done. There was, we're not gonna mess around with anyone who has ties to those kind of people. Um, that didn't happen so much with Josh Duggar when all of that came out in 2015. 
Um, TLC canceled 19 Kids and Counting, but they just segued it into Counting On in which they just didn't feature Josh. Everyone else was still able to be on the show. It was supposed to be mostly focused towards like the older girls uh, growing up and starting families. Um, but it ended up being about everyone again. So it really was like 19 kids and counting minus Josh. Um, they didn't officially cancel all um, associations with the Duggars until this very recent um, arrest that Josh has for his CP. So that took years. I think counting on was on for 11 seasons, they said. So they didn't, you know, they were very slow in that instance to react. So what can we expect with um, this, if anything? I don't know. I don't know if, if this information is going to make its way up to TLC. And again, you guys, I just want to um, reiterate a couple points. Uh, Scotty has shown a pattern of this behavior of dating uh, men in inappropriately younger than her um and she's done it for a while she's admitted it on camera she pled guilty to three counts um this is not um a you know an 18 year old and a 16 year old that you know someone's pissed off parents filed a police report this isn't that situation this is an adult who knew better, who has children and had children at the time, um, putting other kids at risk, uh, manipulating, uh, grooming, and taking advantage of a innocent person, and that and I that's what needs to be the focus, and that's where people's outrage should be. Again, Scotty is 36 or 37 years old. I'm not sure when her birthday falls, but um, she was born in 1984. Um, when she was arrested, she would have been like 34 or 35. When she made her appearance on um, the uh, Trisha show where she admits that she waited until that boy was 18, she would have been around 30 years old, give or take. Um, and it's, you know, we're, we're seeing backlash happen now where influencers are getting called out like James Charles, who's very young, he's 21, but still he's been caught having inappropriate conversations with minors and he's being called out and that age gap is much less. This is, this is just wrong and, and it just needs to be, um, accepted for what it is and in, ab in absolutely no way should it be tolerated. Anyways, you guys, I just had to get on here and clarify that. One, I had to clarify that yes, the person in the blue shirt in the John Yates Live is Scotty. Skyla also appears in the white shirt and I hope that we cleared that up. Um, that I wanted to clarify exactly what, so I didn't want to go into the nitty gritty of what Scotty did, but I felt that it was necessary because a lot of people just didn't know that what she did was actually super fucked up. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, we will see what happens. We'll see if TLC listens to the viewers. Um, you know, a lot of us, we love 90 Day Fiance. We love the franchise. I especially love 90 Day Fiance the other way. That's my favorite uh, spinoff of the, the franchise. But it's getting harder and harder to watch when we're continually subjected to people like Big Ed or Jeffrey or Angela. It's like, wh wh I don't mind a shit show. And I know a lot of other people don't mind a shit show. But there there is a line. and we're And I think viewers are starting to make that line clearer and clearer of what we will and won't accept. And I hope that the powers that be will listen. So anyways, you guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Reality Squad. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Much love.